Welcome everyone to this latest episode of Jim and Java. Welcome everyone to this latest episode of Jim and Java. I'm Jim Dempsey, your host, and we're excited to have you here again this week for this next episode of Jim and Java answering your fundraising questions. Jim and Java is a part of the Development Effectiveness Strategies channel and we would love to have you be one of our subscribers and be part of this ever-growing community of nonprofit leaders who are striving to take their income to the next level and become fully funded. If you aren't already a subscriber, please subscribe to this channel. If you like what you hear today, definitely give us a comment below. If there's some questions that you have and you're using this opportunity, please put those questions down in the comments section. I respond to every question that we have, no matter what platform we use, and uh, we try to get almost every question out here on the Jim and Java broadcast. So make sure that you reach out on our different platforms on Twitter at DevFStrats and use the hashtag Jim and Java on Instagram at Dev Effectiveness Strategies, and you can always email me at developmenteffectivenessm at gmail.com. Let's jump into our first question today. Our question today is from Ron in Arlington Heights, Illinois, and Ron asks, how do I gain back lapsed or even lost donors? Well, Ron, that's a great question. I know that's always challenging for any organization is that whole idea of either finding that your partners are lapsed in their giving or some that have stopped completely. And just so that we're all speaking on the same platform, when I refer to someone as being a lapsed donor, those are generally individuals who haven't given in the last either 13 to 18 months. And then when someone actually moves to the two-year period of time of not giving, that's generally what we record as a lost donor. And in some of the most recent studies I've looked uh, is that 45.5% of donors remain donors from one year to the next. So in other words, the retention rate is 45.5%. Now that means that your organization is, is losing more donors than it is keeping. Now that might sound terrible in most circles, but in all honesty, especially if you are doing any new name acquisition, especially if you're trying any new efforts, uh, our partners, our donors come and go. And that's something that you will have to get used to. Now, don't get me wrong. It is very important that you try and keep as many partners as you possibly can. And the best way to track that is to track what we call your retention rate. What is the number of, in, number of donors that you have in one calendar year based on the number of donors that you have in the second calendar year? So you're comparing 2000 and 2020 with 2021 and the difference between the two will be your retention rate and so you would hope that you would with concerted efforts that you would have at least a 45.5 percent retention rate now there's some organizations that are in the 50s and even some rare exceptions in the low 60s but don't think that you are in the minority if your organization is down into the 30s or 40s because there are a lot of organizations that like i said especially if you're trying new name acquisition efforts renting lists and trying to mail into new sources you're going to lose those people they're going to give one gift and never give another gift again now getting back to the subject at hand how do we keep and how do we earn back those individuals? Now, last week I talked about the idea of communication and retaining our partners, that engagement and frequent communication is very important. If you didn't watch that video, click up above and I'll have the link to the video, the 
Jim and Java episode where I talked about engagement and frequent communication with individuals. Communicating with your partners is the key to successful relationships. It's like any relationships that you have with any individuals, the more that you communicate with that person, the more that you stay in touch with them, the deeper the bond, the deeper the relationship. So having those relationships are very important. But we all know that there's times when relationships will fade away, people will move away, they relationships, something happens that we have a disagreement or a misunderstanding or we just don't see eye to eye on some things and those relationships will either fade away or sever completely. And it's important for us to know what to do with those relationships. And so I would really recommend that you look at strategies to build the bond back up with those individuals. So I would target with emails and with mailings those specific lapsed and lost donors with the things that they specifically liked. I would do a little homework on what was it that they first gave to our organization. If it was to a particular project or a particular effort, if you own a homeless shelter and someone really liked to give to your Thanksgiving effort that you did to feed the homeless, go back to them with the opportunity of feeding some people at Thanksgiving. If you have a faith-based organization, a Christian organization, and someone was really excited about some international efforts that you did, say that you had a video or you had outreach strategies on campuses that you did for freshmen, those kinds of things may have been appealing to someone. Go back to those people with that same offer. You may have been presenting them with different kinds of things over the years and they really liked the idea of that original project. You probably, especially if it was new name acquisition strategies, you probably went to them with something that was your hottest, your most exciting, your most appealing strategy. And if that's the case, go back with that again to see if there's a way that you can't re-engage those people. On individuals who gave gifts that were significant uh, in size. And I, and of course, significant varies with every organization. Some organizations significant is 100,000. Some organizations it's 10,000. Some it's five or even 1,000. If you had some individuals that were giving at those levels and they stopped giving, it might actually warrant a phone call to find out if there are some things that you did or something that went out there that just didn't appeal to them or just struck them the wrong way. It may not have been anything critical, but in calling someone and discussing it, it's amazing how that can make a big difference. And I'm not talking about hiring companies who will call large numbers of last stoners. And I've done that. I do that. And it's effective. But what I'm talking about for most of the organizations and most of the people who watch these videos, you've got a small organization or a medium-sized organization, or you may be a missionary or someone raise your support. Target those individuals, pick up the phone and just call those people and say, haven't heard from you in a while. Wanted to make sure everything was okay. And you may open up some things things that personally they're struggling with. Maybe someone in their family, including themselves, may have cancer. They may be dealing with a death in the family. There may be something relationally that they're struggling with, but it could be something with your organization, something that they read, something that they heard, something that they disagreed with, and you might be able to bridge the gap. Now, that doesn't happen all the time. There are times when things happen and decisions that are made that not everyone's going to agree with. And you may have to part ways with individuals, and, and not in a bad way, but in a good way, but still head down a different path that they're going to start funding someone else. And even though none of us like that, none of us want that, just know that that may happen from time to time. So just be prepared for that. Uh, but I would really look at doing very targeted letters, strategies, and then following up with a phone call or even a visit. And of course, personal visits are always great. Now, if someone has been offended or hurt, they may not want to meet with you, but they may want to have a phone call with you. So, Ron, I hope that helped. And for our listeners, I hope that helped you. If you are specifically trying to deal with lapsed or lost owners, 
or specifically struggling in that area. And if you've got other questions, please submit those to us at DevFstrats and use the hashtag Jim and Java, as I always uh, will offer out to you that opportunity to put your question down in the comment section, or also just send me an email at developmenteffectivenessm at gmail.com. And as I always say, we are here to strive to help you increase income and reach the goal of becoming fully funded. Thanks a lot. We'll see you again next week. Take care.